Next, I want to show you more about the LFO and about the envelope and about multiple patching. And again, the synthesizer is too small to be this powerful. Um, first of all, we have thus far had the mod wheel set to LFO amount. Right now, since the LFO is not patched to something, it is default set to adjust the um, modulate the pitch of the oscillator. But we can switch this to cutoff. Then what happens? Two things. First, what? The mod wheel's down. And now the LFO's affecting the pitch like when the mod wheel used to be up? It's broken. Okay, no, it's not broken. What we've done here is we have done a switcheroo, or actually Archuria has done a little switcheroo. When this is set to cutoff, then the mod wheel controls the cutoff. And when that happens, they very cleverly have made it so the amount knob in the LFO controls the LFO. So when it's set to L when the mod wheel is set to LFO amount, the mod wheel controls the amount of the LFO, and the amount knob controls the amount of the LFO, and you can mix and match to various settings to suit your LFO needs. But when you switch this to cutoff, then the mod wheel is controlling the filter cutoff point, and the amount knob for the LFO controls the entirety of the amount of the LFO. So since the LFO is default sent to pitch, right now because the amount is up, the pitch is going to be, the pitch is going to be affected. So we could turn this down, and then we could go over to the mod wheel. And use the mod wheel to control the filter cutoff point. But that doesn't mean you can't use the LFO. You can always turn it up anytime you want in the midst of your playing. With a little bit of creativity, you can m manipulate both of them at once. And of course, we can also be directing the LFO to something other. We could direct the LFO to the filter. So then, the mod wheel is controlling the filter cutoff point, and so is the LFO. And that is really cool. And see, it's this sort of architecture that leads we synthesizer players to experiment and come up with ways that these structures can be applied. And I think what defines a great synthesizer is how well they have created structures that can be implemented in musical ways. And this structure totally can. Okay, so that's one last thing about the LFO. Next, I want to talk about the envelope which is not particularly complicated, but there's a lot going on with it. Again, I don't know how they packed this much into such a small interface, a small box. Okay, let's look at it. We've been using the gate um, thus far in all the videos. Gate allows some cool things for you. It allows you to direct the envelope elsewhere without having it affect the VCA. Now, when the envelope affects the VCA and say a filter, the filter and the VCA start quiet, get louder, then get quieter according to the envelope. And it may be that you want the volume of the sound to extend beyond the course that occurs uh, with the filter in the envelope. And that's why I've had this set to gate. Because gate means when you press a key down, it's on. And then when you let go of the key, it goes away. Now, if you have an interesting filter uh, envelope, then that allows the filter envelope to do its thing, and then you could have sound that goes beyond that. Here, let me do a demonstration. Let's 
The sound is not controlled by the filter. The sound is controlled by you holding a key down. And that's really helpful. It's nice. A lot of vintage Roland synths had this ability and it really makes it easier. If you have the VCA set to envelope and the envelope filter on, like for example, the you don't get a hard attack. You might want a hard attack like this. Actually getting a heart attack from both. Heart attack. <laughs> it allows a certain amount of subtlety and it's beneficial when you are directing the envelope to another sound altogether, which you can do up here in the mod matrix. The envelope can be directed to metal. Let's hear what that sounds like. So you can shape the way that the metalizer sounds using the envelope. You can shape the way that the ultra saw effect works in regard to the sawtooth. It's doing the same thing. Some of these may be more subtle. But yeah, I don't know if you can tell, but there's quite a different uh, sound that's occurring in regard to the subtlety of the ultra saw based upon these envelope settings. You can direct it to the sub, which I think will be pretty obvious. Like for example, right now I have the envelope directed to the VCA and it's making this short chirpy sound. Now I'm gonna switch it to gate. So the VCA is just on or off and the envelope is entirely directed to the sub and fifth. So that's the difference that you get. So yeah, it allows you that variability because if you only had the opportunity to use the envelope constantly going to the VCA, you could get never get this sound. Um, the envelope can be set to pitch. And that's fun. Again, you know, because pitch has an effect on some of these other effects. You might get some different different outcomes. Okay, that's fun and maybe a little bit irritating. You can, of course, send the envelope to the filter, but since the filter already has an envelope, you know, you can always use the envelope. But I imagine that if you send the envelope to the filter, and you have the filter set to a negative envelope amount, we'll have a different outcome. Let's do an experiment and see what happens. Yes, you definitely get a different outcome if you send the envelope to the filter and the envelope amount is set to negative. So you can experiment with that. I actually can't figure out how that's exactly working. But uh, yeah, you there is that opportunity. Or we can send the envelope to the old standby favorite, the pulse width. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like.
you can hear the envelope affecting the pulse width. And remember that if you, you also have an envelope amount. So right now we're going gate. So the envelope is not affecting the, um, the volume of the sound. So the envelope amount is only controlling how the envelope affects the pulse width uh, modulation. So that's why there's an envelope amount. You can use it in regard to sound. Right now, the envelope is controlling both the pulse width modulation and the volume of the sound. And by turning the envelope amount down, listen, you can hear what happens. The envelope doesn't really affect our sound as much. But here's the difference with the gate. So, and then of course you have the ability to plug both the LFO and the envelope in at the same time and have the LFO control one thing and the envelope controlling another. In this case, I have the LFO controlling the filter. And you can hear that the envelope is still controlling the pulse width. And of course, right now, our mod wheel is set to control the filter cutoff point. So we can even add that into the mix while we're doing all this other stuff. So we have the filter open too far. Let's close it a little bit. So with a little bit of creativity, you have incredible control. That's me controlling the filter cutoff point with the mod wheel, the filter cutoff point with the LFO, and the pulse width modulation with the envelope. And, you know, the LFO could have been controlling the pitch. And so you can plug these into any combination you want. The fact that the LFO is on the same line as the pitch, the filter, and the pulse width modulation, that doesn't mean anything. You can uh, plug the LFO to control the saw up here above and the envelope to control the pulse width modulation. There's no limitation. And if you get cables that split or banana type cables, you can send the LFO to a variety of places all at once and control how it affects each of those things using the LFO amount or the envelope amount in the alternate case. So you can see um, the modulation routing is very powerful, again, for such a small synthesizer. We have the LFO and the envelope able to be directed in really creative ways to a variety of places in the synthesizer.